All right, in this video, we're going to go over distance and midpoint formulas, and then we're going to finish up with discussing circles. All right, distance formula. Not really going to spend too much time on this, but your distance formula is simply distance equals the square root of x2 minus x1 quantity squared plus y2 minus y1 quantity squared, all into the square root. So if you're given two points, say 2, 3, and... 6, 7, and you want to find the distance between the two, simply pick one of these to be point 1, pick one of these to be point 2, and run them through the formula. Now, it doesn't matter which, which you make which, as in point 1 or 2, but what I would suggest is find the one with the bigger numbers, make that point 2, and the smaller numbers make it point 1. All right? It just makes the math easier. So the distance between these two points would be the square root of x2, which is 6, minus x1, which is 2, squared, plus y2 minus y1 squared. So it's going to be the square root of 6 minus 2, which is 4 squared, plus 7 minus 3, which is 4 squared. So it's going to be the square root of 16 plus 16, oops, which is the square root of 32. And I know that can be simplified, but for time's sake, I'm not. All right, so this could be the square root of 32. All right. So distance formula, pick a point to be point one, pick a point to be point two, doesn't matter which is which. I would have gotten the same answer making this point two and this point one. All right, you should have seen this in geometry and then again in algebra two. All right, but that's all there is to um, distance formula. I guess I should write that down. This is distance formula. D equals the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. All right, now let's hit midpoint formula. Remember, this is just really a refresher. Midpoint formula is, and this gives you an xy coordinate. It's x2 plus x1 over 2, comma, y2 plus y1 over 2. And this gives you a, like I said, it gives you a coordinate pair because it gives you a point on the graph. All right, so let's do the so let's do the same point two three and six seven, and then let's find the midpoint. So again, I'm gonna pick that as two and that as one, but it, it doesn't matter. So we're gonna have six plus two over two, comma seven plus three over two. Six plus two is eight. Seven plus three is ten. So this would simply be 4 comma 5. So 4 comma 5 would be the midpoint between those two points. All right. So again, midpoint formula, you're given two points. You just have to find the midpoint between them. So you just plug it into the formula. Now, they may only give you one point and then the midpoint and make you find the other point. Well, you just plug in what you know and you solve for what you don't know. All right. It's that simple. All right, now, the majority of this video, I wanted to spend on circles. All right. Now, standard form of a circle you should have seen in geometry, which is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared, where h comma k is the center of the circle. All right. Well, HK is the center of the circle. So if you had something like, say, X squared plus Y squared equals 4, well, we could rewrite this as X minus 0 squared plus Y minus 0 squared equals 4. So therefore, this circle is centered at the origin, all right, because it's at 0, 0. So anytime you just have X squared plus Y squared, you know it's centered at the origin. And then since this is r squared, the radius would be 2. All right. But say we had something like x minus 3 squared plus y plus 2 squared equals 6. All right. The center here, since this is x minus 3, and in here it's x minus h, that means h is a positive 3. Okay. And since this is y plus 2 and this is y minus k, that means this is y minus negative 2, so k is a negative 2. So this is the center of your circle, 
3, negative 2, and then of course your radius that would simply be the square root of 6 because the square root of 6 does not break down. Okay, This part should probably be a review as well because um, you, we did go over circles in geometry, but I don't know if you go over them in algebra 2 or not. I'm not, I'm not sure. So, anyway, now, so that's your standard form. Now, if you have a circle on a coordinate plane, all right, and we'll start, we still have the x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. All right, so to find h and k, you simply find this point. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 1, 2, 3. So we're going to have x. Now, since this is a positive 4, it's going to be x minus 4, because remember, this is in the form of x minus h. So since it's a positive 4, it's going to be x minus 4 squared plus y, and then we have our minus 3 squared equals. Now, r squared, you just simply find your radius. Start at your midpoint and count to the end. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is going to be 5 squared, or you could simply say equals 25. Either way is correct, either way is just as right as the other. I'm not going to count either of them wrong. All right. So that's how you find an on a graph. Now, say I just gave you the center point of a circle. Say I told you a circle was centered at 3, 2. Um, and has a solution point of um, 4, 5. Okay, so we have the center point. So we can do the x minus 3 squared plus y minus 2 squared. But how do we get r squared? Well, since we have the center point and what's called a solution point, a solution point is a point on the circle. So to get your radius, you simply do distance formula between these two numbers. So distance formula, remember, is x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So you'd simply plug those in and get your radius. And then you'd put that right here. Okay? You can do that yourself. I'm not going to worry about doing that. All right, last thing I want to go over is what's called the general form. Remember, the other was standard form of a circle. This is called general form. General form of a circle is x squared plus y squared plus dx plus ey plus f equals zero. So copy that down. Don't freak out yet. It's, it's pretty simple. But it does involve completing the square. Okay, it does involve completing the square. So say we had an equation like this. x squared plus y squared equals 4x minus 6. Whoops. That's a plus. I'm sorry. Minus 6y minus 23 equals zero. All right, and we want to write this in standard form. Okay, so we want to write it in standard form. All right, which remember is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. So first thing we want to do, we want to get the 23 to the other side. So add the 23 to both sides. So that's what, you, that's what you should have now. Now, let, let's group the like terms together. So we're going to have x squared plus 4x, leave a little bit of room, plus y squared minus 6y, leave a little bit of room, equals 23. All right, so we group like terms. Now, we need to complete the square. Remember, to complete the square, you take your, your x term, so we have 4x, divide it in half, so we're going to get 2, and then you square that, so we're going to get 4. Now, since we added 4 to this side, we have to add 4 to this side as well. Whatever you do to one side, you've got to do to, to the other as well. So, negative 6, which half, which half of negative 6? Well, it's negative 3. Negative 3 squared is 9. 
positive 9, so plus 9. And then remember, we have to add the 9 over here. Now, this all equals 36. And if you notice, both of these, since we completed the square, both of these will actually factor. This here factors into x plus 2 squared plus, and this here factors into y minus 3 squared. I'm going to move the 36 over a little bit. Equals 36. So this is standard form. We were given general form, which was up here. All right. You take the f and you bring it over to the other side of the equal sign. Then you group your like terms together, so x squared and 4x plus y squared minus 6y, and we left a little bit of room. Then we completed the square. Remember, to complete the square, you take the middle term, divide by 2, and then square that number. So 4 divided by 2 is 2, squared is 4. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3, squared is positive 9. And don't forget, when you add these numbers here, you have to add them to the other side as well. All right. Then you simply, since you completed the square, that means these are in fact factorable because you completed the square. So you just simply have to factor them. So this one factors into x plus 2 quantity squared. This one factors into y minus 3 quantity squared. Add them together and then set it equal to whatever this was. And 23 plus 4 plus 9 is 36. All right. So that's... That's really it for this video. Make sure the general form of the circle is really the only thing you shouldn't have seen so far. So make sure you understand how we did this and come to class tomorrow ready to work some problems. See you tomorrow.